All right, hope everyone's doing well. We're back here again. And I'm listening to what you guys are saying and all those Instagram polls I put up. And you want to hear about rigging. So that's what we're going to do today. We got some 16-0 circle hooks and we're going to go over some shark rigs that we put together. So jumping right into it, we got a strand of 400-pound extra hard Mamoy. This stuff is really cool. It stands up to the sharks well. We've had a lot of drag on some of these fish, even that 95-inch sand tiger this year. And they don't damage it too much. Actually, before we get into it, I have this here. So if you could see, this is a previous rig, quite old, that I pulled out just for this video, that we caught a substantially sized fish on. And you can see down here in the loop, it's not so bad. I mean, there's a little bit of damage, but that's after a fight. You obviously change this after every time, but that's just an example. So moving right along, we got a crimp here. I normally use those Jinkai crimps, but in the house today, I had these barrel ones. So the way we do this is we're going to take our mono and put it in one side. And we got our hook. We're going to put it over the line we just inserted through the crimp. Back our line around. And throw it through the top of the crimp like that. This is kind of like a crimping lesson too if you don't know how to do it. So bear with me there. Okay, so what I did here was I just adjusted where it was sitting. You can see you got a nice loop there. You can keep it wide open. These sharks are not shy. And we got a little tag end sticking out. What I would normally do here is burn that and push the end. Make sort of like a mushroom cap. It's like a last line of defense on that crimp. In case a fish is really pulling, that line can't come out. That mushroom cap holds over the top of the crimp and will not go anywhere. I have to credit that to an old boss of mine for showing me. Moving forward, we're going to take our crimp, crimper. and make sure our line is adjusted right. Again, we don't want that loop too tight because you get something called crotch lock and then the hook will stay tight on the line and it may not even move. You want that thing to swing freely. And then we're gonna use the last line on the crimper here, the biggest one. And line it up. Make sure it's sitting nice and even. Has to be straight in the crimper. And there's the first one done. So we got to do that two more times. This is like a triple crimp, an infield one I like to call it. It's not a bench crimper where it's one solid. So let me just finish this up. All right, so our rig is crimped now, or at least the hook. And if you could see there, that is a nice tight crimp. That barrel is straight, it's not off center, the line is side by side, and that should be good. Hook can swing freely, no crotch lock. That part is good to go. So what we like to call this is the bite line. It doesn't have to be too long, it could be like a foot, but maybe we'll make it a little bit longer just for this video. You never know, maybe some bigger fish, bigger teeth, something to that effect. We'll cut the end. Now we got this. Got to work on the swivel side now. So to finish off our bite line, we're going to take a swivel. I normally use Spros or Tsunamis, it doesn't matter. This happens to be a Tsunami. Any sort of ball bearing swivel will work. These ones are 132 pounds. Spinning tackle, this is fine, but anything bigger, you really want to beef up your swivels, like 230, 330, something like that. So, same idea. We're going to take our crimp again, that double barrel crimp, and our swivel. Feed it onto the line. Swivel. Is then going to go over that piece of line back up into the crimp as we did before in the hook that's so graciously banging on the table no crotch lock and we're going to line it up on the crimp give her a squeeze move it down squeeze Oh, see? You gotta always watch yourself. 
Never know when you can mess it up. That crump was off. Get another squeeze. And that's good to go. We got our bite line done with that mamoy. No crotch lock. I keep saying that, but it's very important. So bite line's done. Now we're gonna move over. Oop. Blooper. All right, bite line's done. Now we're gonna move over to the shock leader, shock cord, plain leader, whatever you wanna call it. This is a 150 pound monofilament. Nothing crazy, no specific brand, doesn't matter. And you could crimp this. We're gonna tie it. We already did a crimping lesson in the beginning. But basically we're gonna go, again, this is a spinning tackle rig. I would not recommend just tying it with a conventional rod. That's a whole different game. We'll get there in a second. But for right now, we're just gonna tie this off. We're gonna get our uni knot going. I use that for literally everything. One, two, three, four, five. Pull that guy tight. That is not coming out. I don't care what you say. Yes, presentation may be affected if you pull that knot and the mono bends, but I don't think it's a big deal in this case. I've caught many sharks tying to the rig like this. So now we're gonna move forward. We got our shock leader attached to our bite line, and now we gotta make a space for the rig because this is a self-contained rig. We're not gonna be using a fish finder. We're gonna take a couple beads. I'll show you why. We got a glow bead right here, just for the sole purpose of the shape. It really works out. And we're gonna throw one on the line. Then you could use another swivel or you could just use a plain dual lock. I'm gonna use the dual lock here. I'm gonna take our dual lock, take our line, slide it over the line. So it's gonna now be effectively sitting right on top of that first bead. See that? Now, bead number two. Throw that over. And now this is what we got. We got that duo lock sitting pretty between those two beads. Now the sinker is not gonna bounce off any knots. It's not gonna hit any swivels. It's always gonna be an inch or so away from anything important, which is good. So we got the sinker part set up. Now we're gonna go to the top. Again, you can crimp it. I sometimes do, sometimes don't. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna take another swivel. We're gonna throw her on with a uni knot. And lock it down. This one's stubborn. There you go. So now all the components are done. Circle hook, 400 pound bite line, and we get to the joint here where we got that swivel, we got our shock leader, which is 150 pounds in our case, and then over here we got our weight device, which is just a dual lock between these two beads, up top to our swivel here, which is then going to connect to our main line. So I'm just going to do a little snip, and that's good to go. This rig is absolutely fishable. Let's clear off our table, you can get a full look at it. So this is not going to come out, it's going to swing perfectly with your bait just as you want it to. And you're going to have about a foot or so of free moving bait. But the importance of this that I want to talk about, the self-containing here, is because when this bait, when you throw it out in the surf, 
it's only going to go as far as moving from this swivel to this swivel as opposed to a fish finder where the, the bait can go wherever it wants. If there's slack in the line, it'll go as far away from the sinker as you let it. This will never get as far away from the sinker as what, two feet? Which is good, so you have a free moving bait and it cannot go anywhere. It's the big plus and these sharks, you know, they don't care. When they pick up the bait, I've had them drag 10 ounce sinkers, they just go. So I hope this helped you guys out and we're gonna move on to a different kind of rig.